have y'all tonight. Everybody having a good week so far? Yeah, okay. Well, as you might have gathered, this is a little bit taller stand than what I use. Uh, when I'm, I'm, I'm reaching, it's down here a little ways. So this is a, uh, a dead giveaway that uh, I'm not preaching tonight. Uh, Pastor Brian's preaching tonight, and he's going to do a fantastic job. He's going to be talking about about grace tonight. Grace is uh, greater than our failures. I read your, your title here. It looks like a pretty good message. Can I take this? I, it's, uh, I'm just kidding. But uh, we're very blessed to, to have such a, a wonderful um, associate pastor on our staff. And uh, amen. And I uh, just uh, praise the Lord for his, uh, for his passion that he has for Jesus. And just to remind you of a couple things very quickly, um, we are going to be having our harvest party coming up here. Uh, in just a few weeks, Halloween night from 5 to 8, uh, we still need a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot of individually, uh, can't individually wrapped candies. So if you're anywhere like a Sam's or a Costco or any place like that, uh, just please, just be as generous as you possibly can because honestly, we are way, way behind on that. We... No, we don't. Well, we could use a little bit of more water. Somebody came up here this week, uh, yes, today, and how many cases was it? 60 cases of water somebody brought. So, amen. If you're thirsty, we know where to, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, and we've got a harvest party uh, team meeting this coming Saturday morning at 830. So, even if you haven't signed up to help us in the harvest party, we also need a lot more helpers. We are down on volunteers this year. So we need some help. So if you could help us out uh, Saturday morning at 8.30, we'll put you on a team, and uh, you'll have a great time. Because one of the great things about the Harvest Party working is not only do you get a chance to meet our community, but you also get a chance to rub shoulders with other people in our church, get to know them. It's a great time of fellowship. We all have a good time, laugh, we have fun. So that would be good if you could be a, a part of that. Okay, let's go ahead and do the Lord in prayer, and uh, Pastor Brian will be coming. Our Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for the privilege and the honor that we have of coming into your house on a Wednesday night and hearing your word. We pray that you would just be with uh, Brian in a very special way as he comes tonight. Lord, just give him uh, liberty, give him freedom, give him power. Father, I pray that you put your hand upon him, Lord, and just uh, speak through him as your vessel. And Lord, help us to be receptive to your word this evening. We love you and we praise you. Amen. Amen, indeed. All right, well, welcome. Yes, uh, this is the tall stand. This is for me. I'm a tall guy. I get the tall stand. Um, so welcome to uh, our Wednesday night service, So welcome to those that are online, those that are here. Uh, I'm going to add on to uh, our announcements a little bit. There's, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to do this because we got out of, uh, we, we hadn't done it for a while, but uh, we hadn't done Wednesday night uh, tithes in a while. Uh, so someone will be at the, at the back door if you want to tithe tonight. So someone with the pink bucket will be ready for that. Um, so I'm actually glad to be back in here. It's been uh, five plus weeks that I've been uh, in the back teaching uh, our, what well, we've now rebranded our impact classes, as in making an impact. Well, we just finished what was called Next Steps. And we're going to, uh, I am turning that into a series I call them sequels, so I'm writing the sequels now. Um, that were, we're, What we finished was Impact 101. We're going to have 102, 103, 104 over the next few months. Uh, we won't do any in, uh, we may do one in December, but not for the whole month because we know people travel. So uh, I've been asked a very common question, if I missed 101, do I have to wait till it rolls back around to take 102? No, you do not. Uh, so when I start having sign-ups for that class, as soon as I know that I'm done and ready to put it out there, please sign up for that. If you ask the, we had 10 people each week, and so if you ask the 10 people, they were, they were blessed by it, and we had a lot of fun in there. We talked about some things that you think that you normally know that you, you just kind of take for granted. You look at your neighbor on Sunday mornings, oh, they must already know that, and then your neighbor's going, I wish somebody would ask that because I don't know that. And so we talked about how intimidating praying out loud can feel to some, and we overcome that fear. We've overcome our fear of talking to people where we might normally race to our car, you know. Uh, people shared testimony of giving out our church card to people homeless in a Walmart parking lot. 
So they were using what we were learning in next steps. And the tagline of that class was, you're saved, now what do you do? What do you read? Most people say, well, I really don't know where to start. So we covered all that, and we're going to have three more that are just like that. And at the end of those 16 weeks, you know, we'll have people that have gone through all of them. And what we'll have sitting out here, once we're all done and keep on going, we'll have soldiers trained to disciple. We will be living out Matthew 28. Go and make disciples. And then those disciples will go and make disciples, and you'll see this place blossom. Trust me. All right, well, we are in week 10 of our Standing Firm series. Uh, and as the subtitle has always said, we're learning to trust in the God who fights for you. And so we are continuing in the book of Joshua. Um, so those that have missed, we are still in Joshua. And our goal is each week, as it is with every week and everything that I say, is that uh, our goal is that you draw closer to God. Every sermon, every Bible study that we have on campus or off campus, is it's designed to draw us all closer to God. Amen? Well, there's something I haven't done um, since, I don't know when the last one I did, uh, lesson seven, uh, maybe mid-September. I haven't read the promise prayer to you, so I want to read the promise prayer that we did uh, the first couple of weeks into this study. And it goes as this, uh, and it is very appropriate for tonight. Lord Jesus, my victory. Give me a believing mind and an obedient heart today. Notice that doesn't say tomorrow. Today. Move my spirit from one of defeat to one of victory. And there are many people that have a spirit of defeat. I've encountered it in the last couple of weeks. Help me know that I do not fight a battle I cannot win, but that instead you have already given me the victory. For you are my victory. In your powerful name I pray, amen. We did that the first couple weeks of the Joshua study, and I was looking at it, and I had forgotten to put it in there when I came with you in September, and I just wanted to read it again. All right, well, let's get started. Does anybody remember Super Bowl twenty five? I uh, See, there's, a, there's some that just go, got it, know it, I know who played it, I know what the score was, uh, everything. Uh, but that was in 1991, and it was actually played here in Tampa Bay. It was between the Buffalo Bills and the New York Giants. All right. Um, and at the end of the game, with hardly any time left, and, and uh, the Bills were down by one point, uh, they, uh, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm telling you a story you already know. They turned to their most consistent score, and that was their kicker, Scott Norwood. And the Bills were on the, the, 20, the 29 yard line, I believe, which is about 47 yards away, but he had easily made that distance over and over. And like we've already determined, if you remember history, some of you already do, he missed the kick wide and to the right. And the Buffalo Bills lost the Super Bowl by one point. Ouch and ouch. And, and that kick, I mean, I, I would not have wanted to be Scott Norwood in that moment because that kick, that kick probably haunted him for a long time. Um, he was, I mean, today you'd be hoping for a flag or a review on the play or something. Uh, but there are no do-overs in life. You know, there's no ref or umpire that's going to come out of the shadows and go, bleep, let's review that play. Oh, great, I get to do it again. You know, maybe I won't make mistakes this time. No, nobody comes out of the shadows to do that. They're not going to reverse the play of your life and see if the play stands. And no, Scott Norwood had to live with the consequences, and so do we. And so did Joshua after the fall of Ai in chapter 8. Uh, so tonight's title is God's grace is greater than your failures. He is, his grace is greater than our failures. And I'm going to ask you, do you really believe that? Do you really believe that? Or are you, you, you may be out there, maybe you're online and you kind of believe that, you know? All right, good. You're in the right place. Uh, someone uh, some time ago said, failure is just a recipe for success. I like that. Thomas Edison said, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Uh, when, so what we're going to do tonight, we are going to relate that to Scripture, and we're really going to dig in our way versus God's way. And we're going to see that in Joshua tonight. So previously on, if you, you know, like your favorite shows, previously, last week, you know, uh, Joshua and his people had suffered a humiliating loss from the people of Ai, uh, and that's in Joshua 7. And Ai was fewer in number 
and they had proved that they were greater in might and power, and this resulted in an unexpected defeat. Uh, Joshua and team did not expect to be defeated. And so even one of Joshua's soldiers, Achan, you guys learned about him last week, uh, he had, had even disobeyed God's commands. Uh, the command that came in Joshua 6.18, where it said, uh, you know, uh, do not touch or take the devoted things. You know, and what Achan did was he touched and took the devoted things. And so he broke the command. Uh, so now you find Joshua uh, offers up this prayer in Joshua 7.7. 7. And it says, And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all? To give us into the hands of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would that we have been content to dwell beyond the Jordan. I mean, that, that sounds like, uh, that's not one of Joshua's better days. You know? and, that, and that prayer can mirror and sound like us a lot of times. I mean, have you ever heard this? Oh, what's the use? You know? What's the use? Why do I even try? Is that a favorite? Is that a common one? Those are very common things that when we try at something and we're like, oh, I give up. I give up. So we can identify with Joshua because when we give in to fear, we can feel like that. Satan convinced Adam and Eve that God is not for them. And he didn't do it with all this mystic and magic and woo, look at all that. He just said, did God really say that? And the way he says it is a way that makes us go, well, well, I think he said it that way. I think, you know, uh, and all of a sudden he's got us. He's got us on that road of doubt, exactly what he wanted. Um, but so he convinced them that God is not for them and they took matters into their own hands and you and I are living in the world as a result of that decision. Um, so just like Scott Norwood had been making field goals his entire life, so was Joshua in a way. He had showed courage while serving with Moses. He would have been Moses' MVP if they, were, uh, if they were giving out awards. He took on the leadership role when Moses died. We started the study that way. But with Achan's disobedience, Joshua had failed, and he had failed in front of everyone. He had failed in front of everyone. So after Achan was executed, what do you think Joshua was doing? Joshua probably sensed the people wanting to blame someone. I mean, ever since Adam said, well, you know, it really wasn't my fault. It was the woman that you gave me, God. So essentially, it's your fault, God. So uh, I'm out of this. No, no, no. The, the gall of Adam to even blame. But, but that started it. Once Adam started that, we're all like, hey, it was he that did it. She did it. You know, who can I point a finger at and get it off of me? You know, uh, but no, he could have thought that way, and he was probably sensing their stares. But what do you think would have gone, might have gone through Joshua's mind? I'm not a good leader. I don't have what it takes. I've let everyone down. Starting to see some similarities to, to when we fail. Um, what was I thinking when I took this job? I should have done better. It's all my fault. These are very common things that we all hear. Now, we can identify with voices in our head like that because we've heard them too. How about when you lost a job or got laid off? Four times right here. I've told you before. Four times, you know. Um, what about when you flunked an exam or dropped out of school? You know, I, I took the life insurance exam three times. Got a 68 three times when I needed a 70, all three times. And here's the embarrassing part. I worked in insurance, you know. That was, that was my job for 25 plus years. I was in insurance. I thought I would add to it. I just, for the life of me, could not pass the life insurance exam. So people would say, why don't you have, you got all these other licenses. Why don't you have the life insurance exam? I'd say, ah, it's not for me. You, know, you think I'm going to tell them, well, you know, I failed it three times, so I can sell your auto and home, but I don't, you don't want to talk to me about life insurance. No, I would never tell them. I'm telling you because it doesn't bother me anymore. Um, yeah, but, but the voice of failure that can bring us down, you know? Um, I mean, the things we'll do to keep from looking like a failure. Hey, did you ever take the life insurance exam? No, I never took it, you know? 
Not, I took it three times and failed it. Yes, let's move on, you know. <laughs> and it's not just voices in our heads. We've joined them too. How many times have you heard a voice outside or heard a voice in your head and you start to believe it? You start to believe it. Maybe I am a failure, you know. Um, we listened to them and we began to believe them. But there is a voice we need to listen to, and it's God's. Maybe we don't ever know what to do or say when failure arrives on our doorstep, but God does, um, and that's why we're here tonight. His, listen to this, if you hear nothing else, uh, this came out of our study, his word was written for failures. Look at Moses. Moses killed a guy, but was still important to God, and, and uh, if you want to well, I'm backing that up in Scripture, so you can't believe me. Exodus 2.12 says, when, when he saw the Egyptian beating the Hebrew, Moses looked this way and that way. And when he saw nobody was there, he killed him. That's, not, that's a sign of someone that knows that they shouldn't do that. You know? um, and then, after that verse, it says, and then he hid them. You know? Nothing to see here. You know? burying the Egyptian, you know, with his feet or something, nothing. Keep, keep on moving here, nothing. I mean, David failed in his morals, but God used him. Jonah was, a, Jonah, bless his heart, I love Jonah. Jonah paid with money to get on a boat to run from God. I mean, that's, that's kind of like God looking at God to have a watch, but, you know, God's going, okay, I got all day, Jonah. Um, but he, he, when Jonah was in the belly of a great fish, is when he prayed his most honest prayer, and God heard him. I say, all, I say this all the time, God is at work in the mess. I mean, you look outside these doors, and I'm not talking about traffic, I'm talking about stuff in the world. It's messy, you know? If, and if you're not tuned in to this church or a local church or a Bible-believing church, it is easy to get swayed into, oh, well, maybe that is truth, you know, and uh, oh, maybe I should follow that. No, 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 no. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's Satan going, did God really say? That's right, keep on going. You know, I mean, he's really good at convincing. But um, God is still in control. The creator who placed the sun and the moon and the stars and everything else in the galaxy perfectly knows what to do with us. Have you failed? Yes. Get back up. Get back up. Now, uh, this is not on the screen, but uh, like it said in uh, the verses from last week, Joshua 7.10, get up. Why have you fallen on your face? You know, that's, 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 that's God just saying, hey, I designed you. Get back up. You're not meant to lay, lay down and wallow in, in misery and, and talk about how much you failed. Get, let's, let's try it again. And that's what we're going to see in Scripture tonight. Uh, so we're going to learn from Joshua that great, God's grace is greater than our failures, but we first need to know that, point number one, God used Joshua's failure to show us what to do with ours. He used Joshua's failure to show us what to do with ours. So let's read Joshua 8, 1 and 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear and do not be dismayed. Take all the fighting men with you and arise. Go up to Ai. See? I love that. See? I have given into your hand the king of Ai and his people, his city, and his land. And you shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho and its king. Only this time its spoil and its livestock you shall take as plunder for yourselves. Lay an ambush against the city behind it. And so, as I told you, it's different. So when they were first told to do that from God, they were told, don't plunder it. This time, take, uh, this time, take the spoil and take the livestock. And so, and, and so Joshua and his people had just suffered a, a great loss to Ai in the last chapter. No time for wallowing in our grief here. You know, God says, get up. It wasn't, hey, Joshua, why don't you, why don't you take a day or two and why don't you kick that loss off, you know, get something to drink and eat, and we'll have that. Go no, 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 let's get up, get back in there. You know, I, I mentioned the reference before. We did a Tony Evans study where it was great for men. It talked about no more standing on the sidelines. Quit standing around looking. God says, get in the game. 
You know, get in there. I've designed you to play that part there. You know, and uh, so no time for no time for grief. God says, get up and go, and let's do it my way. You've tried it your way, and and in, in God's grace, great. He he he's let me try to do it my way before, and he just waits on me. You know, just waits on me. How'd it work out, Brian? Pretty good. I knew it. Come on, get back in here. Um, you know, uh, you tried it your way. Now step aside and listen to me and do what I say. That's, that's God's message to all of us tonight, is listen. We talk about meditation on the Word. I've talked, you know, you see in Psalms and Proverbs, the, and I have a passage, and it'll say, Selah, consider what you've just read. You know, that's what he's saying to us. Uh, and so what else did God say in that first verse? Do not fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Like I said, why not time for a rest after a failure? Because failure is a form of quicksand. Take immediate action or you'll be sucked under. I mean, that's what quicksand does. You guys remember the movie uh, The Replacements? Anybody ever seen that football comedy? I'm sorry. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it's one of those that shouldn't work, but it's funny. Um, there was a scene, it's, you know, it's with Keanu Reeves and Gene Hackman. And I, uh, Gene Hackman and I share the same birthday, so we're good friends. Um, uh, but he, uh, he says, let's talk about our fears. You know, real athlete's going to talk about his fears. And one of the players says, you mean like, uh, like sp- I'm afraid of spiders, coach. And he goes, no, no, no. And then they start talking about, well, I'm, I'm afraid of spiders too. They got off track. And he says, no, no, no. I meant your fears on the field. And, and the player goes, you mean like spiders on the field? You know? And the other, other teammate goes, bees. And then they start talking about bees. And Gene Hackman's like, no, 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 no. And the Keanu Reeves character says, quicksand. He says, okay, tell us what you mean. And he says, um, when you fail and there's no change in your behavior, you'll keep failing. Before you know it, you're in over your head. You get one mistake, then another, then another, and then another. You're in quicksand. Before you know it, you're in over your head. And so that is what, if we don't listen to God, we keep making the same mistakes over and over. The devil, Satan's going to convince us that, well, you've, you've just failed too many times. Give up. Give up. I mean, remember Thomas Edison. I haven't failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. That is what we can do in our Christian life. I haven't failed. I've just found 10,000 ways not to witness. You know, I, now I've got it. So we've got to get out there and, and not give up. So, yeah, quicksand. Uh, and if you remember nothing else, remember this. Though we may fail, God's love does not. God's love never fails. Never. I mean, there's, um, you know, we sing the song. It's a good song. You haven't failed me yet. Uh, you're never going to have the yet part because he's never going to fail you. So, yes, no. Um, and also remember this. None of our failures caught him off guard. Never caught him off guard. He's not standing over there going, hey, I didn't know Brian was going to do this. Jesus, Holy Spirit, get up here. Let's, what, what, what's going on here? No, no, no. What, is it, what have we said over and over? What comes in your way has been filtered through God's hand. You may not like it. Do you think I like the, my current situation? No. But I'm listening to God and using it. That's it. That's all I'll say about that. Um, so that's why he would say in those verses, arise and go. Shake the dust off and get back up. I designed you. So Psalm 37, Psalm 37 verses 23 and 24 says this. The steps of a man, a person, are established by the Lord. When he delights in his way, though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong. Means he's going to stumble and can get back up. For the Lord upholds his hand. You know, that, that alone, I mean, how essential is it that all of us understand that verse? If we miss the truth, we're going to miss our best days as Christians. Our glory days, if you will. Um, we must believe that God is greater than our failures. Make your stand on these next few verses. Romans 8, 1 through 4. 
there, and we and we've just you guys, if you guys have been here regularly, you know we just talked about Romans eight one on a Sunday morning. Therefore, is there is therefore now no condemnation, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Notice it says likeness. He was not sinful flesh. He just looked like us in sinful flesh. Um, For in sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Don't walk according to the flesh. Don't, Don't listen to the the voices that are louder than, than yours sometimes saying, hey, I think you should do this. Is that biblically based? I don't know, but I think you should do this. No, there's a lot of voices out there like that, but you need to walk according to the Spirit. Now, this is not a shocker to everyone here in the room or everyone online, but everyone stumbles. Everyone stumbles. If someone raises their hand and says, I don't stumble, you just stumbled. Total little fib. Um, and the question is, what do you stumble into? Are you stumbling into the pit of guilt or into the arms of Jesus? I mean, think about that for a moment. We're all going to fail. We're all going to mess up. What are you failing into? Do you just, ah, oh, woe is me. Why did I do that? Da, 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 da. I always do that. Man, I'm an idiot. I'm this, I'm that. Instead of going, man, I messed up. Jesus, catch me. I mean, we make it. I say it a lot. We make it so hard. As God said to Joshua, do not be afraid. And so the message to us tonight is do not be afraid. Arise and go. Now, where do your stumbles take you? Uh, Physically? Mentally? Um, Wicked thoughts? Do your stumbles lead you to drinking and drugs? Um, or other things. I mean, we could list, the list of sins can go on and on um, if we let our stumbles take us there. So if God's grace is greater than our failures, then we also need to know that, number two, God told Joshua, and he and God is telling us, to revisit the place of failure. Now, uh, that's a hard one for us. I mean, how many parents have told their kids, all right, you mess up, why don't you go try it again? Kids like I, I'm not ever doing that again. I'm not. I'm not gonna. That was too hard, and I messed up. I'm not gonna try it again. So here's God saying, "All right, Joshua, I want you to. I want you to go back." I'm sure Joshua said, "What now?" Um, but here's what actually happened. Uh, Joshua eight verses ten through seventeen. So Joshua arose early in the morning, and mustered the people and went up he and the elders of Israel before the people to Ai. And all the fighting men who were with him, now there's your first difference from the original battle, is that now Joshua was there. He went up and drew near before the city and encamped on the north side of Ai with a ravine between them and Ai. He took about 5,000 men. There's your second difference, because they only had a few the first time. And he set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai to the west of the city. uh, Verse 13, so they stationed the forces the main encampment that was north of the city and its rear guard west of the city. But Joshua spent that night in the valley. And as soon as the king of Ai saw this, he and all his people, the men of the city, hurried and went out early to the appointed place toward the Arabah to meet Israel in battle. But he did not know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. Uh, And Joshua and all Israel pretended, I love that they pretended, you know, they faked him out, uh, to be beaten before them and fled in the direction of the wilderness. So all the people who were in the city were called together to pursue them. And as they pursued Joshua, they were drawn away from the city. Not a man was left in Ai or Bethel who did not go after Israel. They left the city opened and pursued Israel. And right there, they, 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 they had them. They, they ambushed them, and they had them. Um, so as I said earlier, when God said, arise and go, he was essentially saying, let's do it again, except this time do it my way. And these verses we just read examine what happens when we listen to God. Uh, let's contrast it with what happened in, verse, in chapter 7. 
So in chapter 7, Joshua consulted spies. He consulted mankind's opinion. In chapter 8, he listened to God. There's one difference. You know, sometimes we gotta, we got to watch whose opinion. The only opinion that matters is God's. Amen? Okay. Um, in, in chapter 7, Joshua stayed home. Uh, in chapter 8, Joshua led the way. In chapter 7, the attack was led by a small unit. In chapter 8, it involved many more men. So what is the point? The point is God gave Joshua a new plan. Do it again and do it my way. When Joshua listened to and followed God's plan, victory occurred. What a shock, right? When we listen to, when we follow God, you and I have victory. You and I have victory. It might not look like a battle. It might to some, you know, uh, depending on your day. But it could be a victory it could be a victory over your finances, a victory over your health, a victory over a relationship that's not working out, a marriage that's falling apart, something. But when you listen to and follow God, you will have victory in those areas. Hard concept, right? All right. Um, so what have you done with your failures? Has it ended you? As in, that's it. You know, I'm done. I'm quitting. I'm throwing in a towel. Done. Or did you just find 10,000 ways how not to do something? Did you turn to prayer? Or was that the last resort? You know, it's said often in here. Has it come to that, Pastor? Should I be praying? I always say, duh. Goodness gracious. Uh, but you know what? We laugh. I laugh. But that's a real issue in churches today, you know? Well, I guess I've tried everything. I'll pray. I'll just pray about it. Well, good for you. I mean, goodness gracious. Yes, prayer needs to be something that we are doing like we're breathing, you know? I mean, what is praying without ceasing? Having an attitude of prayer. Waking up in an attitude of prayer. I know some of us need to wake up in an attitude of prayer. Amen? Um, some of us can wake up with a ferret or something in our bed. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's such a hard concept. If we start on the right foot, if we start asking the Lord what to do with this day, you think he's going to go, uh, you know what, let me get back to you. I'm kind of busy. No, he's going to say, all right, here's how we're going to attack this day. You know, and we're going to do it lovingly, with joy. I mean, what a foreign concept there. Um, a lot of times we retreat from what we failed from and we never try again. God told Joshua to revisit the place he failed, but this time listen to the voice of God. Um, can you identify with that? Absolutely, right? I mean, I have, uh, I've told you, I've been laid off four times. Get this, one of the layoffs was at a company that rehired me back years later and then laid me off again. Um, so, I, but I, I know that for those three years I was supposed to be there because he put me in contact with people that absolutely needed to hear a word from him. And then once I was done, I was shipped off to the next assignment. And that's how I've looked at it. The first time was like, oh, Trish, what are we going to do? I've been laid off. Second time, all right, we've been through this before. God provided the last time. Third time is like, ah, God's got it. The fourth time is like, hey, here we go, you know. Um, but how good of a listener are you? Now, family member will tell you that for years I struggled with not being a good listener. I mean, I was the guy that would, I'd be watching the game, and I'm like, yeah, 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 I hear you. But I learned, I learned long ago, turn that thing off, mute it, something, and go, yes, you have my attention. Uh, but that's work, right? People go, ah, it's too hard, I don't want to, I've just been working all day. Can't I just watch the baseball game? No, no, no. I mean, relationships are work. Relationship with God is work. You have to, you have to, I mean, how do we ever, how do we ever expect to hear from him if we're not going to communicate with him, if we're not going to read his word? You're like, I don't, I don't, I don't hear from God. I don't know why. Are you reading your Bible? Well, no. <laughs> Aha! <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, your, 
you have to be encouraged. It's why do you think we're encouraging you to open your Bible and read it? Don't just wait for Wednesdays and Sundays. Open it, read it, learn from it, talk to Him. Um, we're only going to improve when we humble ourselves and listen to God. Um, and this has been mentioned so many times, but it has to because it, it is a problem in our world. And the, it's pride. I mean, I've had a pride issue. My wife's had a pride issue. Uh, still has a pride issue sometimes. Uh, <laughs> she would tell you, I'm not throwing under the bus or, or, or bus or anything, she would tell you, but pride will kill the human being. It will actually stifle your spirit. Like, I'm not going to admit to failure because I'm, I'm, I just can't, you know? That. No, I mean, admit it and move on. We were just talking about how much easier it is just to tell the truth, you know? Just tell the truth. The truth really does set you free. It's not a foreign concept. Um, but pride will kill you every time. Pride will get in your way. All right, so um, if God's grace is greater than our failures, then finally we need to know that, number three, God reminds us that failures are, listen to me here, God's, God reminds us that failures are only fatal if we fail to learn from them. Failures are only fatal if we fail to learn from them. Uh, so we're going to move on from the book of Joshua to the book of Luke. And I, 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 love, this, I love this story in Luke. We're going we're gonna to find a story about trying it again God's way. And so um, Luke 5, verses 5 through 7 says, um, And Simon answered. I'm going to try to do it the way I think Peter might have done it. Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. That's why I, th I, th I think he might have looked like that. Uh, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. That's a lot of fish. Peter learned when he tried it Jesus' way. What about you? What about you? So prior to those verses in Luke, Jesus had uh, used Peter's boat for a platform. He needed something between him and the crowd because the crowd had become so large. And so Jesus preached and then instructed Peter to take him fishing. You know, Jesus did all the hard work. He, he was preaching to multitudes, and, and we're not talking a 40-minute sermon. They'd probably been there all day. You know, and, uh, and so Peter had no interest. He was tired from fishing all night and catching nothing. But you know what Peter was really tired of? He was tired of failing all night. I've been out there all night. I got nothing. I don't want to go back out there. You know. Plus, get this, and this is something maybe overlooked in these verses. Because of the crowd, if he failed again, now it was public. Be like, what kind of fisherman are you? Been out there all day and you didn't catch anything? I won't be buying fish from you. Well, you don't have any, so... That kind of thing. Voices in our heads, man, they're, they're, they're all over. Um, but he, would, he didn't want to be embarrassed. And just like us, neither would we. You know? No, I, uh, I've never taken the life insurance exam. I told you that. Well, instead of failing three times. But, and I love this, but Jesus insisted. Ah, come on. You know, let's, let's go out again. And Peter answered, but at your word. Yes, let's go out again. And I, I, I love that he, Jesus insisted. Brian, try that again. Ah, come on, try it again. There, see? I mean, that's, we got to listen to, we got to follow, we got to follow that, that still small voice because he's right there next to you. Um, but that, this was a moment of truth for Peter, and he had, a, he had a few of them, which should prove that God doesn't, give up on you, so don't give up on him. I mean, Peter is your prime example. He's your prime suspect for that. Does God give up on you? No, look at Peter. He messed up over and over and over. I mean, big time, too. We'd be like, man, I'm, I made a mistake. Peter would be like, yeah, get in line. I denied the Lord three times. Yeah, stand over there. You know? Uh, so, yeah, he, he knew what it was like to fail. Um. I mean, that's why you have the great story where after the resurrection, they spotted Jesus on the shore. 
the boat, you know, hey, that's the Lord. Peter's like, <clears throat> in the water, swimming. I mean, I don't know if the boat beat him or not, but I, I think Peter, Peter probably swam so fast. I mean, um, he could have been in the Olympics. But he didn't want to wait. That's, that's, that's what we should feel like when we fail. It's like, man, there he is. He's giving me another chance. Yes, I'll take it. You know, we talked about there's no do-overs in life. There are second chances in life. And Jesus is standing there. Hey, look, here, get up, get up, get up. I, I designed you for this. But I love that he insisted. Um, and so when, when, when Peter said at your word, he was saying, I will try it again, and I will do it your way, Lord. That's what he's saying. Sometimes we need to just try again with Christ. In the boat, in the car, at work or school, at home, etc. So what failure are you struggling with right now? You know, it's between you and God. But what failure are you struggling with right now? And, 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 and the encouragement that I have for you tonight is don't guess at what God can do. Know it. Believe it, and then live it out. I mean, live it out. You, if, you, if you walked in here tonight, if you're online, and up until this point you've just been messing up all day, turn it over to him. Turn it over to him and start over. Start over. I mean, we, we gave you examples. He, he is a God that uh, is four failures. Moses, David, Jonah, Brian, you know? I'm not, I'm, I don't want to give you, the, I'm not in the Bible, I'm just, I mess up, I fail. Um, so yeah, what failure are you struggling with right now? Are you, are you so focused on your finances that you can't see straight? I've been that guy, you know? I was driven by what was in my account or what was not in my account. Um, but those days are long, by, long behind me, you know, because God has shown me over and over and over, just as he did with Peter and many others, just listen to me, Brian. And you'll see, you'll see blessings. And I have. Um, yeah, we've got to live it. You've got to not, not, uh, not hope so, not guess so, not crush your fingers. Forget that stuff. Live it. Believe it. I mean, the, the gospel, the book you hold in your hand is absolutely 100% true. You know? so, and, and don't forget this truth. What does Philippians 4.13 say? I can do what? All things through him, through Christ, who strengthens me. I have told in my Bible study and other places, if, 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 if the topic of prayer for strength comes up, and someone say, I just, I, just need, I just need strength from the Lord, I tell them to turn it. Ask, him to, ask the Lord to be your strength. Not to give you strength, but to be your strength. Man, just get in here and do it for me. You know, be my strength. I can do all things. And that, you know, athletes sabotage that verse. You know, it is not just for athletes. It is for everybody. I can do all things. Um, I always pick on the movie. Uh, I, I like the movie Soul Surfer. It's a faith-based movie. But I guess to, to, to get in with the crowd, they drop it. They just go, what happened to I can do all things? And every time I watch it, I go, you're leaving off the best part. Through Christ who strengthens me. It's not just I can do all things. But I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. Don't waste your failures by failing to learn from them. I mean, you know, it's a recipe for success, you know. Like, oh, I failed. Fantastic. You're right around the corner for success, you know. God has not forgotten you. Keep your heads up. You never know what awaits you. It's time to wise up. I love this. It's time to wise up and rise up. You know, it's time to get wise and rise. All right, so in, you know, I, I'm going to get you out a few minutes early, which uh, no applause. No applause. Uh, as I mentioned at the start, uh, the kicker for the Buffalo Bills walked off the field with his head down. I mean, wide to the right. Man, how, how, how long do you think he'd live with that? I mean, can you imagine, like, man, I just, uh, these guys are going to start doing spitballs at me. I mean, they're going to probably puncture the holes in my tire out in the parking lot, you know, and, uh, and I'm sure for a while he couldn't find peace, you know, I'm sure, because what am I telling my wife, I am my worst critic, man, you know, I look in the mirror and I go, man, why'd you say it like that, you know, you, bet, you know, and so I know that he, 
Uh, he just couldn't find peace. I'm sure the voices of failure were so loud, you know, he had to grab his head, just, I, I, I can't focus. It just Voices of failure too loud. But, according to stories, the fans still supported Scott Norwood. And the Bills returned to the Super Bowl in 1992. And Norwood, ah, ah, in 1992, Norwood was perfect throughout the postseason, including a 44-yard field goal that served as a decisive margin in the AFC Championship, uh, a game against the Denver Broncos. Now, they lost the Super Bowl again, but that's not my point. <laughs> yeah, four times they did, um, but that's not the point. The point is that Scott didn't let the previous failure define who he was. He went and tried it again, and yeah, sure, they lost four times. <laughs> Failed the life insurance exam three times, but luckily that was the end of the road for insurance anyway. But look, the point is he didn't let it define him. Don't let your failure define you. Don't walk out of here and go, you know, I messed up, and there's no way past that sin. There's just, there's just no getting past it. I mean, my wife has counseled young ladies that would come in and say, man, I can't stay here. I've just, I've done, I, I just, trust me, I can't come to church, you know. And Trish is almost like, yeah, uh, get in line. Let me tell you, let me tell you my story. And they just realize, really? You know, God still loves me? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no failure. I mean, look, I mean, Jonah tried running. You can, you can, you can try running if you want. But you can't out hide, you can't outrun God. I mean, goodness. Well, let's read uh, Hebrews 12. One. We're talking about, you know, uh, the fans accepted Scott. And again, it wasn't his fault they lost four times. Uh, just the first one. <laughs> but uh, Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, right here, let us also lay aside every weight, right here, all this weight that builds up here, Every weight and sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Drop that weight and go. Think about who is looking down on us. Abraham, Peter, David, Paul, and Joshua. Not to mention your family that's passed on. Friends, neighbors, and former coaches that we grew up with. They're pulling for you to keep going. They're pulling for us to keep going. You may have missed the goal. You may have messed up, but you are still a part of God's team. I just want you to, I don't want you to, I don't want you to walk out of here kind of believing that. Man, just get pumped and believe that. You know, he is for you. Who can be against you? No one. No one. So you are, if you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, and He is your Lord and Savior, and you are striving, and I use the word purposely, striving to live for Him. Because again, if you're striving for perfection, you're not going to get there. Um, you can keep going for it, because the, the Bible says, be holy for I am holy. Keep going for that, and you're going to mess up. Just don't, don't give up along the way. You are a part of God's team if you have already accepted Him into your heart and into your life. So I, I pray uh, that this was a blessing to you. Uh, I would like to just close in prayer. So if you'll join me, bow your heads, close your eyes. Uh, online, close your eyes. Our Father, uh, thank you. Thank you for this night. Thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, all that you're about to do. Lord, uh, I thank you for the Point Church. I thank you for uh, the surrounding community, for its church members. Thank you for your word, for your son. Uh, and I could go on and on, Lord. We just um, praise you, Lord, for who you are. And just, Lord, we're, we've got a room full of people, an online uh, full of people that are going to mess up, that we're going to fail from time to time, Lord. But we thank you that you never leave us, you never forsake us. You're, Lord, you never say that was one failure too many. No. Thank you so much for never get up, giving up on me. And thank you for not giving up on those out here and online. And we just um, ask you to bless them as they leave this place and just bring us back here uh, together as family. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And we will. We'll see you. Uh, for those that are um, signed up or if you haven't signed up yet and you want to be a volunteer at the Harvest Party, Saturday morning, 
8.30. Oh, yes, uh, we got somebody standing in the back. If you want to give your tithe, we've got the basket out there for that. So if, uh, if I don't see you Saturday, we'll see you Sunday morning at 9.30. Thank you.